Hello everyone and welcome to Monaco for round four of CTCR season six. We've got 15 drivers for the final race of 2023. It's been a memorable year and hopefully we have a memorable race to finish us off. A lot to play for in the standings and just out today to win a Monaco race is almost like a championship in itself. It's going to be SJ Williams who's going to take us on our first lap as we watch him go through the tunnel as I get myself set up. SJ Williams with his first start, full-time start, last time out in Spain for Alpha Tari, where he picked up two points from an unfortunate early DNF. But we're ready to get on the way as he goes through swimming pool now. And is about to start his first lap. So true Anthony knows and turns 17 and SJ Williams is on his way up towards Sandovot. Breaks well down to third and gets on the power as soon as he can. He's a very clear run all the way up through Beau Ravage into Massenet. You have to just ease the car through here and then Casino Square. Try and avoid this bump on the left hand side before he breaks down in now towards the Grand Hotel hairpin. Through Mirabeau now and into Portier. It's been a clean lap so far. He's kept it valid, but this is where it can all go wrong now through the tunnel and down towards the Novel Chicane, one of the best overtaken opportunities on track. It's also the place where a lot of laps can go wrong as Aura Beng disqualified and SJ Williams unfortunately cannot get his lap right. There's an Alfa Romeo going through there with as of Rando as Orabeng is disqualified to the back of the pack and I'm pretty sure Damey has also disconnected from the session. Rando takes the swimming pool very well, just kisses the curb or kisses the barrier I should say on the exit through to back now and into the swimming pool chicane. We'll see what Rando he is driving this really really well and into Larascas and through the final corner now Rando opens DRS powers to the line and the lap everyone will be chasing is a 1.12.4 which is quickly taken by Tyro with his 1.11.6 I think Damien may have disconnected so if that's so we'll get him back in another driver has also left us and um, one of the Red Bulls has hit the hit the barriers we have Ricky coming to the line with just barely overtaking Tyro with a 1-6-6-5 Caden on his outlap and behind him is Randro still a lot to prove this year in terms of his pace is this the race where it all comes together so far he's on provisional pole a good lap from Randro 17 he is in pole position at the moment and behind him now will be looking at shot in the Alpine can Alpine pick up their second points of the season? They've only one point so far, which came in Mexico. And he has a lap he can definitely improve on. We've already lost a few drivers. SJ Williams sets his lap and gets up into the top three, beating Tyro by one millisecond. Tyro flying to the line now, ready to start his second lap. As we see one of the championship protagonists, SLR Quattro with a 1098. What an incredible lap. Currently sitting fourth and still no race win yet. Is this the race where it all comes together? Can it all come together for Caden? Again, also no race win yet. Currently running in third. You'll hope this McLaren gets out of his way and he doesn't seem to be. That's the McLaren of Psych who is starting his lap, so it's unfortunate for Caden. He goes second fastest anyway. And then has go back on track. We've lost four drivers already uh, as Hyper goes eight fastest. And ooh, a little bit of rear locking. He wants to get out of the way quickly before Lucky Nutshot comes by. And he does. But he just wants to be a little bit careful. 
11 drivers still with us out of 15 here and that's only in qualifying I'm pretty sure Mick too crashed Damie may have crashed as well Orbang was unfortunately disqualified and um, May 1 is what I'm going to call him uh, he unfortunately disconnected pretty much immediately into the session but he'll only start 12th which isn't that bad Nobody on a lap at the moment. I'm pretty sure Lucky Nutshot maybe. He came to the line there just after Hyper had a bit of a spin. And he is currently running in P4. Not a bad lap at all from him into the early 11s. He'd be chasing Randro who's looking for his first points. Or not first points but first podium possibly of the season. Move himself up into the top 10. We'll see. He's the only one who seems to, I think, be pushing. I don't quite know. Oh, he's hit the wall there. And he's got a bit of wing damage. And he is into the pits. Rascal may be pushing here. We'll see now as he comes to the end of his second sector. He has the Ferrari of Ricky ahead of him. And Ricky gets out of his way. As he comes to the end of his middle sector. And that's not going to be great. I'm pretty sure he is on controller. Otherwise the car probably wouldn't have turned like that. He's smacking every barrier here. And more than likely he'll come into the pits. And he'll refuel. Hyper just ever so slightly up on his time now. As he goes down towards the Novel chicane. He is on a wheel. Very high sensitive wheel if that's the case. Hyper now coming to the end of his lap through Rascas. He goes and into the final corner now. DRS opened for Hyper. And to the finish line. It's going to be a four tenth improvement. Which puts him up into the top four. Good lap from the Aston Martin. Ooh, who's that? That's psych. He is gone into the barriers there at Mirabeau just want to be careful a bit I'm sure he'll be hoping to improve pulled out of a full time drive there in the US after a disappointing round but he is back and he's back now racing part time for McLaren while the two drivers are out We have a Ferrari flying it to the line of Ricky, who's just barely matched his time through the middle sector. What is it to gain here in the final as he heads through Anthony Knows now and down towards Sandovot on this only DRS straight off the track. He improves by four tenths and jumps Randro 17 and moves up into the top three. So not a bad lap at all there. So we see Hyper. Had a bit of a problem there as he's coming into the pits. So next to the line will be SJ Williams who clips that inside curb. And just avoids. Well, right on board with Caden Conway who is on a lap at the moment. He looks to be one of the drivers that may be able to spark something into this qualifying. But he's invalidated into the first corner so that's not going to help him. Behind him then is SLR Quattro, already set a very impressive lap time as Tyro goes second fastest with a 110.1 .1 there. SLR Quattro looking to improve though in his run now. He has two tenths to gain if he wants to do that because it's not an impressive first sector. He has a clean run of track all the way to Rascal who is heading into Novel Chicane. So pretty much a free run. But it looks like he's going a little bit slow, which means he has pulled out of this lap. As Syke finally gets his competitive lap on the board and impressively goes fourth fastest. As Randro, 17, is two tenths up, but cuts the chicane at Novell. And that's going to be unfortunate for him, but he'll have to go again. SJ Williams, I'm pretty sure, on an in lap. So drivers 
bundling their laps so far at the moment. Luckily, it's for the first time this season, we are going to have a wi winner that is not a Mercedes driver. In the first three rounds of the season, we had all Mercedes drivers. And it's looking like that's not going to happen this evening because there are no Mercedes drivers on track. Alfie and Brandon both unavailable tonight. Oh, Of course, Thiago won last time out, but it has pretty much come to nothing. Uh, because of the five second penalty he picked up for his collision with Marshy. Caden Conway's on a lap and he's a tent up. All of his time now is to gain more or less through the final sector as oh, Rascal's had trouble here and hopefully does not get in Caden's way here. His car, it doesn't luckily for Caden as he goes up through now down towards the back. Has he still improved Caden? He is, he's two tents up. And this is where it's all to gain because he lost all the time being held up by Syke who was about to start his lap. So now this is where Caden is going to see that delta fly up and up and up. And with DRS open now to the line, Caden Conway goes on to pole position with a 1096. An impressive, impressive lap. We'll see if anyone is going to be able to top that. Caden takes provisional pole here with five minutes left of qualifying as we see Randro 17 unfortunately have a crash down here at Anthony or the Novel Chicane it's taken many lives already Mictu taken out at the back Rascal and Randro both crashing at the Novel Chicane Lucky Nutshot, seven tenths up on his time. This could be a very impressive lap now, and if he gets it right, he could be looking at maybe getting up into the top four. Lucky Nutshot, top five, just misses out on Syke and goes fifth fastest. SJ Williams down on his time. Rando coming through the tunnel now and into the Neuville chicane. He doesn't clip the barriers there and keeps his car clean as he heads through to back now. And we'll see where he is on his lap. He's four tenths up. He'll need to improve a little bit more to get up into the top ten. The Alfa Romeo driver good at keeping it clean into Rascast now. It's a very taken very, very cleanly. And he'll have to get on the power as quickly as he can. Down towards the line, Rando goes 10th fastest with a 1.11.8 we'll see if he can improve on that in the later laps Ricky coming to the end of his lap one Ferrari on pole where can the other Ferrari put his car that's a very clean final corner I'm sure he'll gain a lot of time through that Ricky to the line improves but doesn't go into the top 5 and that's our only two drivers on track before we see a wild hyper come through now and he's going to be the first one to start his final lap of qualifying be interesting to see if Ricky and Rando do get in time for another lap in qualifying Hyper I'm sure he'll be looking for at least a 5 tenth improvement to push himself up possibly towards that top 4 Caden is out there's no movement down at Red Bull so far on whether SLR Quattro is going to come out early. Caden wants that free run of space. He's come out as quick as he can towards the end of qualifying as Hyper is going to take his time as he goes through the Nobel chicane and is ready to go for his final lap of qualifying. Will he get a miracle? lap out of nowhere and maybe push himself into the top three or can he just improve by at least five tenths and get up into the top five we'll see now because ricky did go again that was his final lap he went four fastest hyper now is going and is ready to go here now 
He has a clean run ahead of him because he's just gotten out ahead of Lucky Nutshot. He's clipped the barrier stall on the exit of Sandovat. It's a long way from him all the way to I think that's Syke up the road along with SLR Quattro who finally came out of the pits as he comes down to his end of his sector one and he's three tenths down. So I don't know if he's going to abandon this and go again or is it all to play for here for the Aston Martin Irish driver as he goes and I think yeah he's abandoned that surely he's missing apexes everywhere and that lap has been aborted so we'll switch to the man currently on pole and he has matched his time in the first sector we'll see now I'm sure there's still a lot of time to gain in the final sector for Caden because of course he had a brilliant first and second sector in his first lap and then it all fell apart in the final sector and even then I'm sure he took that final sector very very softly but unfortunately there he's cut the Novell chicane and he hasn't validated now he'll get to the line in time to send another lap so that means he will be last to go in qualifying just wants to make sure he doesn't hit the barriers in the meantime or getting the way of SJ Williams oh he's hit the barriers there on his run through the swimming pool chicane this is SJ Williams last lap of qualifying currently running ninth where, ninth, where can the Alfa Romeo put his car he goes 7th 6th 10th improvement very impressive Sykes starts his lap Caden starts his lap we see Rando he's on a big rush here to get here in time as Ricky has had problems there he's retired on track now that might be trouble here for Syke and especially for his teammate Caden who smacked into him and Caden's qualifying is over Ricky retiring on track has caused Caden absolute heartbreak here Caden out and Quattro gaining by three tenths how much has he gained enough by now as he's going to come to the line now SLR Quattro to the line is it going to be pole in Monaco for the Red Bull it is a three tenth improvement he's jumped Caden Conway and Quattro is on pole as Tyro starts his final lap of the session psych three tenths down qualifying over for him lucky nutshot invalidated and couldn't make the line that's his qualifying over SJ Williams the same not improving as hyper barely improves there on his final run Rando going through now so it means the only man that can deny Quattro is Tyro 010 who needs to improve by six tenths if he wants any chance of doing this Caden will be fuming he will start in second as here goes Tyro now down towards the Novel chicane the second sector and he always oh, taken that really really well this is going to be a really good lap I see here now true to back Tyro is five tenths up on his time this is going to be a very very close end to qualifying he smacks the barriers going through swimming pool he may jump Caden here but will he jump SLR Quattro as well Tyro to the line he goes where does the McLaren driver put his car it's on the front row he couldn't take Quattro's point but he took it off Quat off Caden and the McLaren driver is on the front row Hyper then comes to the line can't improve P10 best for him what an end to qualifying but Caden will be absolutely fuming because the retirement of his teammate took away his chance of a possible pole position but we'll see what happens in the race SLR Quattro is on pole and it's an all Dutch front row with Tyro alongside Caden starts third and it's Ferrari 3 and 4 these two crashing into each other in qualifying may not be friendly down towards turn one Psych in fifth with Lucky Nutshot behind him in sixth SJ Williams in seventh with Rando in eighth Randro 17 his retirement still kept him in ninth with Hyper in tenth Rascal the last one to set a lap in eleventh the rest May 1 Damie Mikutu and Orabeng all did not get a lap in they will be starting from the back of the grid
formation lap about to get on the way as we watch the cars about to start the race. As far as tyres go, it'll be a little bit more strategic now. The fact that it is going to be a 50% race and we do have 49 laps ahead of us, or 39 laps. All three of the top three start on the softs. Ricky, the first one who's going to go a little bit longer on the mediums. Psych, Hyper, Rascal, Mikatu and Orabeng all go on the hards. Everybody else on the mediums. It'll be interesting because I think the guys on the softs, if they can, they may go enough to then get onto the mediums. I think that will be the plan of action. We'll see. They've all gone for the softs hoping that their fellow driver ahead of them didn't and they get a better shot off the line. We'll see now. I'm sure penalties will play a big factor as well. That's a lovely, lovely shot there of the cars going through here on the formation lap. The quality here is absolutely brilliant and that's why the PS5 gameplay is a lot nicer than the old gameplay I had. So we're ready to get underway here at Monaco as SLR Quattro is going to line up on the grid and we are ready to get underway here for the Monaco Grand Prix just waiting now for Orabeng to come through and get ready round 4 of 14 and a lot of chance now for drivers like Cade and like Quattro to catch up as we go to five red lights here for the Monaco Grand Prix. It's lights out and away we go and I think Tyro may have just got a better start than Quattro there. Quattro covers him off and into turn one we go. It's Quattro from uh, Tyro from Caden Ricky keeps the places side by side there is Syke and lucky nut shot as going through the opening corners Tyro is chasing Quattro but Quattro still has the lead Caden got a good getaway all the drivers on the softs got a better getaway than the drivers behind we head through now everyone has kept it clean few drivers thinking of a dive down now through the hairpin they go Quattro is leading Tyro here at the moment. Under pressure down at the back. Drivers all around the place. Looking to send it. There is SJ Williams on Syke. And Syke had to defend and was forced off track because of that. As we watch the drivers go through the marina there. Everything looks clean as we were watching on board with Syke here now going up towards Raskas you see drivers scraping the barriers Tyro under a bit of pressure here from Caden but at the moment it's all clean as Damie has dropped back and has picked up damage Rascal has retired he's lost it out of the final corner and the virtual safety car is out and an early exit for one of our new drivers. Unfortunate that we didn't get to see much of him, but I'm sure he'll be back for a few more races. But that is his race coming to an early end. And good timing for Damien now. He's going to get on the herds, and I'm sure he's going to go as long as he possibly can now. Unfortunately, hit some sort of barrier. And he's down to 14th. Green flag, so we're back on the way. As we watch Tyro. You can watch from Caden as the drivers look to chase after SLR Quattro. K 
Hayden already gained about a second away from his teammate, who's also already gained a second away from Lucky Nutshot. Everyone kind of gapping away from each other at the moment, which I suppose would be a good thing. Aura Bang right on the back of the Alfa Romeo here, and he's going to look to maybe get by. It's a hard place to overtake of, of course, Monaco. Aura Bang waiting for his moment. His moment is not going to come yet. We'll keep an eye on him. Psych or Hypers put a lot of pressure on, but Aura Bang is right on the back here of May 1. Is he going to maybe try it? Oh, that's lovely. He's kept it, and he's down the inside, and that's a brilliant move from Aura Bang. And he's up into P11 there, and that is an excellent move from the Williams driver, who's showing just how brilliant he is at driving. Of course, had one of the drives of the season in the US and that is one of the best Monaco overtakes I would have seen he's completely set him up there going through the casino and has completely done him into Mirabeau and sorry for any sort of discrimination against me because I don't think he did anything really wrong there but Aura Bang that's a brilliant move the Alfa Romeo's down to 12th and the Williams is up to 11th as Hyper's also putting a lot of pressure here on the back of Randro though they're all kind of in a DRS train at the moment SLR Quattro the dream start for him just like it was in the US and then it all fell away we won't talk about that but Caden is getting closer to Tyro which will put a little bit of pressure on Tyro and will put a lot of pressure off Quattro meaning he can just sail away into the sunset here if of the Mediterranean Sea As four laps into this race, currently cruising here, as Lucky Nutshot is gaining a little bit closer to Ricky as well. The top three look like they're going to remain the top three probably for the majority of this race, as SJ Williams has got by Psych there, down into the Nouvelle. He seemed to try one, I think, possibly down into the chicane, and he's got the move done. There aren't many overtakes in Monaco, and unfortunately I've somehow managed to miss one of them. But we'll see now whether Sy can come back at him. Through this next part of the lap. We watch him line it up, possibly into Sandoval, as Hyper may have picked up, he has picked up damage, he's into the pits, and he's going to replace his wing. Which puts Orobang up into the top 10. He'll be chasing down Rando and keep an eye because he may get by soon. Psych, is he going to do what Orobang done to... Oh, as Mick2 has retired there. And the safety car is... Or the virtual safety car is out. Mick2 has had trouble down at the back. He's hit the wall. And both of Hyper's friends are out here after five laps. And this time it's a full course safety car. chance for the drivers to catch up and take their time this may give us a little bit of time to tell you what's happening next so of course we have a race again next Saturday in Paul Ricard as Piper has picked up a drive through penalty for speeding under the safety car Hayden and Lucky Nutshot have decided to come into the pits. That is a brave call from Caden. He's going to hope to go now 35 laps on hard tyres. Is this a strategy decision that could pay dividends come the end of this race? And the same for Lucky Nutshot. Safety car is waiting in an awful weird spot. The end of the tunnel. As it finally picks up the driver now and we're ready to get on the way. Oh, and what is Ricky trying there? Except he didn't see. 
and he's picked up a penalty, which, to be honest, I think is rightly deserved. I don't know what on earth he was trying there, and he's tapped into the side of Tyro, and he's picked up a five-second penalty. So we'll wait a while for the drivers to come in, but next up will be the first time Tier 1 will race at the circuit de Paul Ricard in France, just up the road of course from Monte Carlo. It will be an interesting race, as Tier 2 was definitely, and we'll hopefully have more drivers at being in the new year. It'll be the first race of 2024, before after that we travel across the channel to Silverstone for the British Grand Prix which has been on the calendar every single season and then back across to Austria before our one week break then into Bahrain which I think then takes us on a long journey through Asia over to the Americas before we finish the season in Sao Paulo so as we wait for the drivers I think you're going to have to find a way to entertain yourself because we will be a while waiting on Damy. I will be back in a short moment and put all the data up on the board. See what you want to think of strategy, but that is how we're looking here seven laps into this race.
apologies for the delay, but we are back underway. As the safety car restarts and Quattro yet again getting a great getaway. Caden has made him sway up the places ever so slightly. And with his fresh tyres, he's going to start to close in on some of these drivers. Pick them off in order to well, jump Quattro when it comes to the pit stops. DRS is enabled. Caden gaining on sight here. He's going to have to pick his spot though. And it looks like the most, the best overtaking opportunity is through Mirabeau into Mirabeau right here because drivers do seem to get a little bit a little bit out of control there and it's just enough for Caden to get by we'll see now he's getting real close to the back of the McLaren here and he's just waiting for the right time to get by so here he goes now moving and he's going to try it possibly around the outside or maybe a switch back could possibly be on here into the back psych is just shutting every door and it shows how easy it is to defend here through monaco Caden just waiting his moment here for a mistake to pounce on and get his car ahead. Oh, very, very nasty there. Both have hit the barriers. Caden's gonna try it now. Psych squeezed them so close to the barriers. They're side by side here. And Caden, oh, he smacked into the barriers. He's nearly spun round. He's managed to save it though. Getting very nasty, these two. But Psych manages to keep his car ahead. Really dramatic stuff here as somebody spun round. There's a big crash down there. What has happened there? Oh, and Aura Bang and Randro 17 caught up in all of it. Caden continues his pursuit on Psych. catch by and so does May 1 but Caden's into the pits he picked up damage and his race has gone from bad to very much worse here from qualifying to where he is at the moment it's been extremely unlucky for the Ferrari driver not been unlucky for SLR Quattro though recently he is flying ahead of Tyro who looks like he's going to be finishing second we are a third of the way through this race and it's like this time last year all over again it's SLR Quattro dominating in Monaco Randro's picked up a penalty for corner cutting there. Caden's picked up a penalty for multiple warnings. Looking for him, he's got a lot of space now. To be a bit more aggressive on these tyres and possibly set a fastest lap. what he'll definitely probably start trying right now
Down the inside goes Hyper there on Randro. It's an optimistic move to say the least. Randro defends it well. And all this and Caden is catching up. May 1 has retired. And that is... It's nothing, I think. Is Randro disconnected here? There seems to be some sort of ghost and a decent going on. Caden's around the outside of Hyper. Nice move there, waiting for the mistake. And then he's going to go down the inside of Randro 17, and it's a brilliant overtake from Caden. But a massive crash down at the back for Randro and Hyper. And Caden gets the place, the two places in the end, but Hyper and Randro, well, you could almost see it coming with the amount of pressure both of them are putting on each other. Randro out. And far away from the points. Tyro comes into the pits. Making his one and only pit stop of this race. Possibly going for the undercut. A large undercut it would be on SLR Quattro. He'll get a lot of clean air here as he'll come out just in front of the Haas of Damey. More than likely. Damey goes by him there. But of course he'll get to cut the corner. But are you still going to be behind Damey? And it's looking like... Yeah, that's unfortunate where he's came out. Psyche has cut the chicane, picked up a 10 second penalty. He has no front wing. It's looking like his race is going to come to an early end here. As he drifts into the pits. And, oh, that voice crack yet notably retires from the session. He was already lapped. Tyro putting the pressure on Damey here. Damey may have to just concede the position here. Tyro's going to go down the inside. It's a lovely overtake into the chicane. Damey had to cut the chicane. He probably should have just let Tyro have it. It was his corner. Fresher tires. He was down the inside and he's picked up a pretty useless penalty. But Quattro's made his pit stop and he's coming out now. Tyro's only going to come through the final corner now. So SJ Williams leads at the moment. And SLR Quattro is back into the lead of this race. And Lucky Nutshot, who kept his nose clean, has come out just behind him here. Lucky Nutshot, of course, can go till the end. The same with Orabang, if they so want to. It'll be a mega task, but they definitely do have it. But unfortunately, I don't think he will go to the end, because I think he's clipped the barriers and he's lost his front wing. Orabang... Looking to get by has pretty much put him into the barriers and Lucky Nutshot has lost his wing and he's down to fourth. <coughs> Not ideal. For the Irishman, who's now had to cut the corner because he wouldn't have made it. That will be removed if he requests it at the end. But he'll have to be careful to wheel this car in and get a replacement wing. It's crazy to think we've only had one safety car as we're nearly halfway through this race. And lucky nut shots into the pits. And lucky nut shots retired from the race. So Caden, amongst all the drama earlier on, has got himself back up into fourth place. We have five drivers gone for this race, meaning everyone else will score points. Oh, and Damien has lost his front wing down at Mirabeau. he has retired from the race. So 
so now we're down to nine. doing his way to pick his way through this and keep himself in it. Himself and Orban will pick up points. Will Orban get that podium though that he looks to want? Tyro is going to put the pressure on him here. Orban looking to defend. He's managing to keep in front for the moment. Very close to Orobang and down to his favorite, favorite overtaking opportunities later on the breaks. And he is into second place. 10 seconds up the road from Qu or down the road from Quattro. Who isn't dominating like he did in RSL, where he lapped pretty much everyone. He actually hasn't lapped anyone as of yet because of the safety car, more than likely. But Tyro is back up into second place now. And we'll start to cruise a little bit longer. Caden, he's looking now to also get up. Oh, he taps the back of the Williams. Oh, these drivers looking to fight for their podium. Caden has the penalty, of course, which will set him back. As he's going to go down the inside into Mirabeau. Drifts the car through. Somehow keeping it in one piece. He's unable to get the place. Nineteen laps left. Orban gonna try and defend Caden late on the brakes again. He's so much later than Orban and he drifts through the corner, but he manages to slow down the car. Get up into third. And now all Orban will see is the back of that Ferrari. And he gets further and further away. Not to say there hasn't been drama or battles in this race. on the back of Al the Alpha Tari as Hyper has decided to retire from the race and that's only eight now remaining uh, seven drivers retiring from the race Andro comes into the pits and that is another retirement. The Williams driver 
has decided to pack up his car for the evening as he has finished. Seven drivers remain here in Monte Carlo as Quattro sails into the sunset in his Red Bull Tyro. I'm sure will try and bring his car home in second and Caden looks like he is pushing his car all the way to a podium here in Monaco. We'll wait to see what happens. Oh, and that's Randro's car still out on track. I don't know what the retired car is doing. Oh, and it's smacked into the back of Ricky and then has retired from the race. I don't know what on earth happened there. But Ricky now has wing damage. And I think SJ Williams might as well. 15 laps to go. And the only battle that we seem to have had left has left us. And more than likely Ricky will steam into the pits and replace this wing. as pit stops have gone that is only his second surprisingly Caden is the only other driver to have made two pit stops that's still left in this race but Ricky is now last out of everyone and is just going to have to bring home the car more than likely for Ferrari here So Caden is deciding to take a risk here. He is in for new set of tyres, which means that SJ Williams will overtake him on track. And Caden has decided to give me a little bit of joy, something to comment on. He's going to come in, try and set the fastest lap. Although, it depends how much he's going to catch up by. Not only to SJ Williams, but he's given now Tyro a window to come in and for him to set a fastest lap. Ricky has done that with an 11.5. And if they leave this all too early, they're going to give Quattro an even bigger chance for him to set a fastest lap. So, it is that decision time to see who wants the extra point or not. 
Caden's in for new mediums, so whether he actually sets the fastest lap will be the interesting one. Maybe he didn't have a set of softs left all the times he went in qualifying. But he is gaining rapidly on SJ Williams. We'll see how long it takes before he catches up and overtakes him. Caden, of course, as well, has that three-second penalty. That you'll have to take into consideration. But not only does he have to overtake, but he's also to get three seconds ahead. So we're right on board now, because this will be the lap that he has the chance to set it. And Aura Bang being on the fresher tires means that he may have as good a chance as anyone is setting one as well. 11.5 is the lap to beat. He is 8 tenths up on his fastest time, which is a 12.3. So that is already on course for an 11.5. He heads now down towards Nouvelle. Turns the car in well. Two to back now. And he is 1.4 seconds up. And he'll see now as he comes through the final corner. And Caden will set the fastest lap with a 1.10.7. Now Aura Bang two seconds quicker on his fastest lap. How much quicker is that? He sets a 1.11.6. So Caden now closing in on SJ Williams and he just has to get by him. For the podium. More than likely, he'll wait for the Nouvelle Chicane, where he has the higher braking power on that Ferrari. I think he's going to fake for the outside. He's going to maybe switch for the inside. No, he's, he's taking his time. He wants to do this cleanly, so he does not lose his wing, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, and he's given Tyro that big gap in order for him to come in and set a lap. We'll see a lot of people have just retired. Now a lot of people have just retired in the pits. They haven't actually crashed. So if people are joining us here for the first time, it hasn't actually been a very dirty race. It's been a relatively clean one. Caden gonna try it around the outside. He's been clipped and he couldn't quite get the move done. Oh, he's tried it there and now he's hit the wall. And that's unfortunate. And SJ Williams, well, I'll have to look at it again. But it looks like he was trying to defend something there that wasn't on. And yet again, the drivers couldn't keep it clean enough. As we have 10 laps to go and Caden's retired. Caden smacked the wall and the safety car is out. This is interesting now. So that is Caden over. Only 7 points or 4 points, 6 points sorry, for him. It's game on for the likes <coughs> of Tyro. Who's kept within a pit stop of SLR Quattro. Meaning, if Quattro does decide to stay out on these old mediums, Tyro will win this race. Well, he'll have a great chance with the fresh softs. Now, this is also very different to US because, of course, Quattro track position will be everything here in Monaco. Everyone else has decided to come into the pits. And they will come out ahead. 
of the race leader, meaning they will have time. Quattro comes in. Tyro sees this and his response is he's staying out. So here we go. It's game on here for the winner of the Monaco Grand Prix. Quattro on the fresh tires. Tyro track position. It's going to be a mega finish to this race, to the year here of CTCR. How much laps of racing will we get? That's what Tyro's thinking. We will soon find out. Nine retirements, only six drivers left, but it'll be six drivers all battling for that podium place. Whether it's embarrassing or not, I don't really know, but it was. It's definitely going to be an interesting affair.
So unfortunate for Rando. The safety car is in this lap here. We will have six laps of racing to the line. Tyro on his 18, 20, nearly 20 lap old tires against everyone else on the fresh softs. Rando is just about going to catch up in time as Tyro gets us underway and Quattro will chase him down. Can Quattro get by for his first win of the season? It's been all Mercedes power. It's like the 2014 to 2020 era at the moment. It's all Mercedes domination here with Mercedes winning the first three races and a Mercedes powered car currently leading. But can a Red Bull get into the equation here? Quattro with a win today means that he will be top of the championship. The second place only matters to P2. So that means as he tries it here, possibly on Tyro, trying to go for it. Tyro couldn't, he defended well. But Tyro, oh, or Quattro is gonna try it into the back here. Tyro shuts the door, but Quattro has it again, trying a true swimming pool. Tyro stays ahead. And he's desperately trying to keep this lead. Quattro under a lot of pressure now from Orabang right on the back of him. With Quattro right on the back of Tyro. Five laps to go. Tyro so close. To taking home his first win since Japan of season three. And Quattro could be under all sorts of pressure because down the inside there is Orabeng and Orabeng is up into second place heartbreak for Quattro who seems to have lost it all here has he lost everything though because Tyro and Quattro or Tyro and Orabeng still are battling here Quattro looking to get by all six drivers riding head to tail here as Orabeng trying it possibly down the inside there. He keeps the place. And they're all just in line going through the Nouvelle Chicane. So at the moment it's looking quite relaxing for Tyro. McLaren haven't won a race since Tyro won or no, McLaren haven't won a race I'm trying to think probably all the way since Adjdox won season 4 Mexico was the last time McLaren crossed the line in first place Orabeng putting Tyro under a lot of pressure here but Tyro is going to keep the place for the moment down towards Mirabeau we go. Four laps to go. It's still Tyro in the lead. Oh, but he's he's had a little bit of contact and Quattro was going to try it down the inside there, but Orabeng had the run around the outside. It's how quick you can get down on the power now and gain as quick as you can through this section, but he's not going to be quick enough. And it will be a day full of reports for everyone knows that there's a chance of them winning this race. As Tyro, when the Tyro pick up, Tyro's picked up a penalty, a penalty for track limits. So Orabeng doesn't actually need to overtake him. I do not remember when that happened. I'll have to just click back. It was, oh well, it could be removed, that's the problem. Into the swimming pool chicane, that's where he picked up the warning. But at the moment it's looking like Orabeng is going to win this race. Look at them, they're all banging into the hairpin. As far as penalties go... 
Tyra, Ricky and Rando all with three. Oh, and a bit of a desync there. And Quattro has gone through Orobang. And he's back up into second place. He's back up into what is the lead of this race. Now, he will want to just get by Tyro now. And lead this race. Rando has left the session. He looks like his car is going to finish in sixth. Quattro putting the pressure on Tyro. Tyro staying in position, but Quattro knows he just has to stay within three seconds and hope that Tyro's penalties do not get removed. Or Quattro himself still on the fairly fresh tyres. They're eight laps old now, though, so they're maybe not as fresh as they were used. They used to be. He'll still try and get by. We enter, and we come near the last lap of this race. Quattro and Tyro will chase each other down. And as they head through the final corner now, and they're head up towards Sandavot for the last time of this race 39 times it's gotten quite repetitive now but as we near 5 to 10 Quattro is gaining on the back of Tyro here as they look for the lead of this race Tyro defending for his dear life despite even having this penalty it's looking like Quattro is going to be able to just sit in behind now with Orobang falling away he'll sit in behind and he will take his win at Monaco Tyro starting to deraid but I think Quattro is as well through the chicane they go Quattro gaining on Tyro but because of Tyro's penalties, Quattro will lead this race anyway. And as we head through the final corner, it's going to be Red Bull's first win of the season as SLR Quattro wins the Monaco Grand Prix. Tyro comes in in second with Ora Beng in third. SJ Williams fourth with Ricky in fifth. And that is the final of our finishers. A brilliant race. A lot of drama, a lot of retirements. But it's SLR Quattro who is the winner of the Monaco Grand Prix. Yeah, Rando, you do get sixth place. Don't worry about that. Eight points coming home for Alfa Romeo. SLR Quattro wins the race after 52 long minutes. He takes the lead of this championship. Tyro finishes in second. So t Quattro, now I just say, he led the championship at the end of 2022. <coughs> He's going to lead the championship at the end of 2023. Tyro in second with Orobang in third, SJ Williams fourth, Ricky's fifth, Rando in sixth with Caden picking up a point or five points, no, seven points in seventh, Rando in eighth with Hyper in ninth, Damien picks up the final point, the rest all scored. That's Lucky Nutshot, Psych, May, 
Mikatu and Rascal all picking up zero points. We'll ask if Orbeng would like the interview for the P3. So unfortunately, we won't have oh, we won't have any drivers to join us for this evening's interviews, which leaves us with that. Thank you for watching the Monaco Grand Prix. It was a dramatic one, lots of controversy and crashes. And I'm sure there'll be a long, long list of reports as well. Until then, we'll see you next year or in seven days in Paul Ricard on the 6th for the French Grand Prix. Until then, I'm Orbe Gaffo. Good night.